Could this be one of Warren Buffett's worst trades? I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And the Oracle of Omaha is on a buying spree along with many other retail investors, but this one trade could be his worst. Let's head over to Reuters where we picked today's story up as Berkshire Hathaway boosts Occidental Petroleum stake above 20%. In a regulatory filing on Monday night, Berkshire said it paid about $391 million for nearly 6.7 million shares of Oxy between August 4th and August 8th. The shares closed at $60.04 on Monday and are up slightly since then. The share price has more than doubled this year already, benefiting from rising oil prices following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And although Buffett may have delighted in the market's second quarter swoon for serving up quality stocks on sale, as many retail investors also jumped in on, the general drawdown in equities dinged Berkshire's bottom line in a big way. The company was forced to record an investing loss of $53 billion on its portfolio of securities to paper loss only, and something that no investor in Berkshire Hathaway should lose sleep over. After all, Warren's considered one of the best stock traders in history. And now let's take a look at this trade because this one may be one of his worst. And one of the reasons you might buy Oxy stock is just because it's a leveraged trade on crude oil. In this chart, we have Oxy in the red and green candlesticks and overlaid in purple is crude oil. So you can see they move fairly similarly together, but Oxy being a leveraged play. So if you believe crude oil is going higher, well, then you'd want to take a look at Oxy stock because you're going to make even more money if it goes up. But if crude oil goes down, which I think we can make the case for, well, that means Oxy stock is likely headed lower. And with Warren, he's buying right in here around $60 a share. Let's take a look at where crude oil from a macro perspective is headed. And the first place we're gonna start is the current new orders from the diffusion index from Texas. Now it makes sense to look at Texas because that's the home of US oil. And what do we see in blue here as the diffusion index heads lower? Well, does that mean that crude oil prices are headed down? Well, here you can see going back to 2018, the diffusion index started to head lower and crude oil prices slowly started to come down. Here you can see back in around 2015, the diffusion index headed lower and so did crude oil prices. But how about going into the great financial crisis? Actually starting in 2007, you saw new order growth start to slow and then contract. Crude oil prices continued higher and then came crashing down. And how about we head over to Philly where we've got even more data on new orders. And certainly what do we see here? The same trend, new order growth slowing and eventually crude oil prices coming down and it tends to follow in line with that. And it makes sense because if businesses and factories are, or businesses are ordering less and factories are producing less, well then you need less energy and ultimately less demand leads to lower price. But that's not the only factor that could drive oil prices lower. As we're starting to see the four week moving average initial claims side higher, well, what does that mean for crude oil prices? Well, you can certainly see that initial claims can rise so people can lose their jobs and you can have crude oil prices rising, but ultimately you'll get a mean reversion there. And here we can see that claims were starting to flatten out and looking like they were gonna turn higher as we're headed into recession before the pandemic, crude oil prices coming down. Now, once again, claims data are heading up, but could it be uh, all about the Fed? And maybe that's the big push that if the Fed were to pause in September, which we'll talk about later in the show, which I think is highly unlikely, well, that has to be bullish for crude oil, not necessarily. What you see then is, of course, the Fed can pause, crude oil can rise, but as soon as the economy tilts the other direction and the Fed starts cutting, well, then all of a sudden you're going to see crude oil do a hard reversal lower, and that happens every time. So this could be Warren Buffett's play on war, but we can look back in history as well and see that war isn't always bullish for oil. But what we do know is if the Fed is starting to pause or cut later this year, well, that means rates are coming down, the economy is coming down, and crude oil is going with it. And there's one thing that doesn't have to come down when all that happens, and that's your portfolio. I'll put a link up here to Portfolio Shield in the description below because it hedges with bonds. And when we know crude oil goes down, as you're soon to see, so do interest rates. And that's where bond prices rise because something else that came down today 
was inflation. Let's take a look at what's going on here as the U.S. inflation runs cooler than forecast, easing pressure on the Fed as consumer prices rose 8.5% from a year ago, unchanged from the prior month, easing off their high of 9.1 with a drop in gas prices. As we've talked about so many times on the show, one of the big key indicators into the CPI is gasoline prices. We'll look at that in a moment too. As a consumer price increase, index increased from 8.5% from a year earlier, cooling off from 9.1% in June. That was the largest in four decades. Prices were unchanged from the prior month as a decline in gasoline offset increases in food and shelter costs. The so-called core CPI, which strips out the more volatile food and energy components, rose 0.3% from June and 5.9% from a year earlier. The core and overall measures came in below forecast and here we can see looking at gasoline prices so now we've got the consumer price index in blue on a year-over-year -year rate of change overlaid against the u.s regular all formations gas prices in red and you can see this strong relationship here because it makes sense we what do consumers put a lot of money into gas prices what do they see when they're driving around gas stations gas prices it's where they get their expectation of inflation from and what goes into inflation because again we've talked about this before the gasoline energy used heavily in the manufacture of goods, the shipping of goods, you know, transportation of humans and all kinds of things. We use it all the time. And so when it goes up, well, it makes sense. Prices go up. But when it comes down, what is that telling us for the consumer price index? That it is likely to head lower soon. But will that make a difference in September? Well, we'll get to that in a bit. Because while a drop in gasoline prices is good news for Americans, their cost of living is still painfully high, forcing many to load up on credit cards and drain savings, as we've talked about on this show. And after data last week showed still robust labor demand and firm, firmer wage growth, a further deceleration in inflation could take some of the urgency off the Fed to extend outsized interest rate hikes. And again, we'll make that case that I think that is highly unlikely, but still American consumers are feeling the pain even with a little bit of relief at the pump because what you see is real average weekly earnings or inflation adjusted average weekly earnings remains negative at minus 3.6 percent here you can see on a year-over-year -year rate of change that means wages are not keeping up with inflation so even some relief at the pump is not making a big dent in consumers pocketbooks however those gains aren't keeping up with inflation as we said a separate report showed that real average hourly earnings fell three percent in july from a year earlier dropping every month since april 2021 the impact of inflation on wages has started to dent spending and will continue to do so with the pace of personal consumption growth decelerating between the first and second quarters. And of course, if people don't have the money to spend, that means their spending is going to come down. Sure, they'll use their credit cards for a while, but as we talked about, that becomes transitory when people realize that their wages aren't keeping up with their credit card payments. But well, are there other signs inflation is coming down? Well, there are. Because when we take a look at the core CPI, which excludes food and energy in red, we see it's hooking lower here on a year-over-year -year rate of change. We see in blue the headline CPI. And of course, if the core is trending down, the headline is going to follow it lower. We can see that throughout history, that where the core goes, headline is soon to follow. And while prices are showing signs of moderating, there are several factors that risk keeping inflation high. Housing costs are a big one, as well as unexpected supply shocks and while wages are still climbing at a historically fast pace, as we've seen, that concerns some economists of a so-called wage price spiral, but that is unlikely to happen because wages aren't keeping up with inflation to begin with. Now, the question is, will we see the Fed cut? Well, I don't think so. And I'm going to make the case for you right now is the reason I don't think the Fed cuts is we've seen them or pause here because we've heard them say time and time again, one month is nothing. It doesn't create a trend, meaning they're going to look for two, three months of this, meaning I still think September is a lock for an increase. The question is how much, but the history shows the Fed does continue to tighten even as inflation uh, starts to flatten out. You can see here going Going into the dot-com bubble, inflation started to flatten out. That didn't hold off the Fed from continuing to tighten. Here you can see in the early to mid-90s that inflation was actually fairly stable, but the Fed continued to hike. Here you can see, of course, inflation rising, the Fed continuing. Even as inflation came down, it wasn't until it really dropped that they started to pause. And here again, inflation rising. We see the Fed continued to tighten even after inflation came down. 
They continue to do so, but that all is going to translate into further job losses as financial conditions get too tight. Of course, we have to take a look back to our chief strategist, Jeff Snyder, who's on a follow-up story from yesterday's news on labor productivity, he says declining productivity on this scale and this time frame is unprecedented. Experiencing that kind of imbalance, firms will respond dispassionately, logically, by cutting back their payrolls, as I suggested yesterday. Most businesses will write out a short-term miss match, though it remains to be seen if at these drastic levels. However, the longer it goes on, regardless of how much more likely companies will have to take action by reducing their expenses to balance actual output. All that says is what we're going to see is higher unemployment claims, and that could lead to lower oil prices. And of course, puts into question Warren's big trade on Oxy. But if the bet is on war or even on the Fed, well, don't look for the Fed to cut just yet. As far as I'm concerned, we have September as a one and done. And after that, we see him cut. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.